Luprolide is a synthetic or man-made form of GnRH, or gonadotropin-releasing hormone. Interestingly, luprolide has different effects on GRNH signaling depending on its dosing and how it's delivered. In this video, we'll give you a simple way to remember all the details about how luprolide works for test day. It's a beautiful evening out at sea for a father-son fishing trip. Now, I don't know much about fishing, but I do know that fishing lines need to be made into loops in order to tie knots for hooks and stuff. Just look at the loops in the fishing line and the hands of the father and son duo here. We'll get to why there are differences in their loops in just a bit, but for now, the loop in the fishing line should remind you of the drug name luprolide. Get it? Loop for luprolide? Let's continue exploring that fishing trip to learn more about how this drug acts. Looks like this is the first time the son has ever gone fishing. Just like any novice, he's having a lot of trouble with the loops in his line. Yikes! Looks like he's clumsily hooked his pants with his line and pulled them down, revealing, or releasing, his underpants. By the way, these accidentally released underpants should remind you of gonadotropin-releasing hormone, or GnRH, since the boy is kind of releasing his gonads, right? This should remind you that luprolide is an analog of GnRH. Luprolide is basically a synthetic form of GnRH, and depending on its dosage and delivery, it can lead to opposite effects in the body. Let's talk more about this in our next symbol. Take your attention to the skilled hands of the father. He's quite the seasoned fisherman, and it looks like his hands are moving in blur as he ties these knots quickly. By the way, this fast and short creation of all these little loops by the father is our symbol for the pulsatile, or rapid short dosing, of luprolide. Short and repeated doses of small amounts of GnRH mimic the actual release of GnRH by the hypothalamus and stimulate GnRH's downstream effects. Let's talk about our next symbols to see what this looks like. Being able to tie all these loops quickly our father has also caught a lot of fish. Just look at the fish attached to the line of the father. By the way, this increased number of fish here should remind you that pulsatile administration of luprolide causes increased FSH secretion. Get it? More fish for increased FSH? Next, notice that the father is so good at tying loops and catching fish that he can afford to watch the lighthouse to ensure their boat is going in the right direction. By the way, a lighthouse should remind you of the hormone LH, since LH stands for lighthouse, right? Well, actually, LH stands for luteinizing hormone, and the quick loop-tying father looking up at the lighthouse should remind you that pulsatile dosing of luprolide increases LH secretion, since LH and FSH eventually stimulate production of the sex hormones, testosterone, and estrogen, this increased LH and FSH dosing is clinically useful in fertility or hypogonadism, that is, when patients cannot make enough GnRH themselves. In short, the pulsatile administration of luprolide causes increased secretion of FSH and LH from the anterior pituitary gland by acting as an analog of GnRH. In stark contrast to his father, the son is having a lot of trouble tying his loops. We can see the line has gotten tangled here to form one huge long loop. Coincidentally, the big single long loop is our symbol of continuous administration of luprolide. You know, since a long and slow formation of one loop is a bit like the continuous delivery of one big dose of luprolide. Long continuous dosing of luprolide has very different effects on the anterior pituitary gland than pulsatile dosing. Let's find out what these effects are, shall we? Just focus on the sun's activity here. Having so much trouble with tying his loop here, he has not caught even a single fish and has instead pulled his pants down. The lack of fish here should remind you of decreased FSH levels since FSH sounds like fish, right? In addition, the kid is having so much trouble that he definitely cannot spare any time to look at the lighthouse. This should represent decreased LH levels, 
since we know that a lighthouse represents LH. Putting this together, this picture should help you remember how a long continuous dosing of luprolide actually decreases LH and FSH production by the anterior pituitary. The mechanism here is complex, but it is thought that long continued presence of high amounts of GnRH or luprolide actually desensitize the anterior pituitary gland, causing suppression of hormone release. This in turn reduces the downstream production of testosterone and estrogen. In general, this downstream reduction of sex hormone synthesis is useful for treating disorders like uterine fibroids, endometriosis, precocious puberty, and hormone-dependent cancers like breast or prostate cancer. In short, you should just remember that luprolide acts as an agonist at the GnRH receptor when administered in a pulsatile fashion, but as an antagonist when administered continuously. Like all other drugs, use of luprolide can cause some side effects, specifically suppression of LH and FSH production in the continuous dosing of luprolide can lead to side effects like hot flashes, erectile dysfunction, decreased libido, hypogonadism, or even menstrual irregularities. These should be pretty easy to reason through based on the mechanism, so we didn't symbolize them here. I mean, come on, suppressed sex hormone synthesis causes reduced sex hormone function? It's not rocket science, guys. Other side effects include general nausea and vomiting. This is a rather nonspecific side effect that isn't worth committing to memory for test day. I mean, nausea and vomiting is seen in a ton of drugs, right? Just focus on the mechanistic stuff we've covered and not so much on the side effects here, all right? All right, I think I've had just about enough of fishing in lighthouses. Let's do a quick recap before we head back to dry lands. Luprolide is a synthetic analog of gonadotropin-releasing hormone, or GnRH. It has notably different functions depending on how it's administered to patients. When administered in a short, pulsatile fashion, Luprolide acts as an agonist or activator of GnRH receptors and increases the production of FSH and LH. This increase in FSH and LH increases downstream sex hormone synthesis and can be used in the treatment of infertility and hypogonadism. In contrast, when luprolide is administered in a long, continuous fashion, it acts as its antagonist or blocker at GnRH receptors and decreases the production of FSH and LH. This ultimately reduces sex hormone synthesis. Okay, we're finally done here. Let's head inland and dry off. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. For more resources on this topic, including fact lists and interactive review images, click the image next to the More Here arrow. I'll see you next time.